Hey, what's up guys? This is Gary coming back to you here from the Ramsey Custom Shop. And I'm finishing up on a project and I wish I could show you uh, what this project is and a lot more about it, but <clears throat> unfortunately I cannot get into the details of it because it is a customer project and it's uh, I'm under a disclosure agreement not to disclose you know details about what this is. So, but I'm on the finishing uh, stretch of it here and um, I've got another section, like you see, this one's already welded up. Um, I've got another section of this that does, is not welded up yet, but it's already been uh, fabricated and machined and ready to weld. Um, and this is the section of it here. But I'm basically gonna show you what, what I've gotta do. I've got this uh, inlet neck here that's that's gotta go in on the bias or on the, the tip of this uh, 45 here. And this is eighth inch wall one by one and a half inch rectangle tubing um and this is eight this is one inch od tubing with also with uh, 120 thousandths wall thickness or, or eighth inch wall thickness so um this is on, on a uh, scale of hardness of what i do around here it's going to be one of the hardest things that that uh that i do and i think it's a deal where if you're trying to do something like this and you're trying to use an old school, you know, your grandpappy's uh, wood drill press, you know, that's usually used for wood. This is this is going to be extremely difficult for you. So, um, let me show you the different options I'm looking at. I'm really curious how you guys would do this in your shop. Uh, and so, let me show you what I'm looking at, and um, you know, the choices that we got, and then we'll go from there. All right. First of all, uh, just going to mention that we're going to be using our Cincinnati um, horizontal and vertical mill and uh, this thing uh, has a horizontal spindle that you can see in the uh, in the center in the background here and obviously a vertical spindle as well the horizontal spindle has a 10 horsepower three-phase motor and the vertical spindle has a five horsepower three-phase motor um, and the uh, the unit weighs about, I think around five to 6,000 pounds is, is what this weighs. And the uh, vertical spindle has a high and low gear. And we'll show you that a little bit uh, before we actually do the work. But I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the machine uh, that we're gonna be using for this. Um, but, you know, to do a job like this, you need something extremely rigid, rigid as, as rigid as possible. And you need something that has a spindle in it that you can really control the RPMs. Uh, down to as low as you can. So let's look at the tools that we're going to use to do this. All right, so these are the options that we've got here. Um, and if you look at the uh, this piece of uh, stainless pipe that we've got to put in here, um, let me double check. You see that this is just under an inch. So we got, um, you know, 980, 990 thousandths basically. Uh, and this is a 15 16 twist drill that is, you know, 920 thousandths, so not quite enough on that. Um, so that's, that's one of my options, although this thing, you know, is, is kind of beat up. And it's got the reduced shank on it, even though it does have a flat. Um, because we're going to go in, you know, on a 45 on this thing, you know, on an angle like that. Once those flutes get in there, I'm really concerned about using a twist drill, uh, thinking that it could possibly, you know, sort of want to grab, you know, because we got an interrupted cut all the way down, mostly all the way through. Um, now, whatever I do, you know, if I do decide to use a twist drill, if this ends up being my only option when you guys see the other things, uh, I will probably mill a flat across that, you know, and then uh, we'll, we'll come in here with, uh, this is a half inch carbide uh, spot drill. And um, so we'll definitely, you know, be spotting it and uh, we'll put a flat on it and then spotting it, spot it. And then we'll come in and probably drill it with a three eighths inch drill bit and then we'll come and finish it with this if this if, if i can't make my other two options work so my first option is going to be to use this one inch uh four flute carbide end mill here now this thing's you know seen quite a bit of abuse 
but it was used in aluminum and it was mostly profile milling uh, but it got heavily heavily used uh, for a couple days there on a project but the um, the center point it it does look to me like it is center cutting I, I don't know for a fact that it is but it looks like it is to me and you can see this flute right here has got a chip out of it you know it's kind of nicked up there so this this thing's been beaten you know it's been beat on pretty good so i would probably put at least uh you know i, I could come in with a smaller end mill and plunge a uh, a one inch hole i mean a, a three eighths inch hole or a quarter inch hole with with an end mill into the uh you know right into the uh, point there now i have a seven eighths that's that's in really good shape and again i think this would cut you know because it comes to a point there I think this would cut a center point, but again, I'd probably drill a small hole or plunge another end mill through the center. Um, and this one is sharp. You know, this one is in good shape. The uh, the problem with it is it's only seven eighths. So I could put a seven eighths inch hole in it and use a carbide burr to open up the hole. Again, this is gonna get welded in. I'd like to have a nice fit up on it, you know, if I could, but you know, it's not, you know, again, it's not a critical, measurement it's not a critical you know part that's getting welded in there uh and all that so now i also have this one that i don't think has ever been plunged this is also a carbide roughing end mill now this thing's been broken i actually broke it by having it too far extended the collet i was using it in uh i was trying to use a one inch end mill in an r8 collet um and it just barely had it gripped and it was loose and i was putting a lot of pressure on the side of it it was just you know i was trying to use it in a machine it was not meant to be used in so and i was doing profile cutting with it so i think now this one you see does not come to a point in the center but because this one's new and sharp and is not you know beat to crap on the bottom of it here um you know i probably you know this one's probably sharp enough to to do the job so what would you guys do? You know, I've got three options here. Hopefully I can get one of these to work. I'd be curious what, what you guys uh, would end up doing. So I'm, I'm thinking about, I th I'm thinking what I'm going to do because this one is really beat up. Uh, this being a three flute, one inch. Let me double check this. I'm pretty sure this is one inch. We'll check the, uh, yeah, 998, somewhere in that range. So, um, and I've, you know, so I could just swap this out in here. This is a one inch, uh, tool holder with 40 taper spindle on it or a 40 taper uh tool holder to go in the spindle so i'm thinking about swapping that out and we will uh spot it with our carbide uh spotting drill and then we'll use um in fact what i can use is this is a cobalt um 2164 drill that i i've already drilled a whole bunch of holes in it with that and um it's actually still was cutting after after drilling 200 holes it was still cutting pretty good so we might use that to to get the uh get a starter hole and clear out for the center of this thing and uh and see what we can do from there so let's get set up and let me show you the setup and then we'll see what we can do about getting this thing drilled all right just showing you a little bit about the the options to us on this mill um Here's our uh, gear selector here. So we're gonna be running this in low gear and uh, here's our RPM adjustment. Let me see if I can get this where the glare is off of it. Yeah. So you can see there's two sets of numbers for every position on this. Um, that glare from those lights is pretty strong. The uh, the top number is when you have it in low gear and the bottom number is when you have it in high gear. So we're going to be running it in low gear and, you know, for our starter bit here, we're probably going to run this at about two to 300 RPMs. And here's a question for you guys. And um, the other option I have that over here I was going to talk about a little bit is the power feed. <clears throat> and, you know, you've got basically three options here. You see that 0.3 inches per minute, or I'm sorry, Point point oh oh three inches per spindle rev, and you have point oh six, and you have point oh one five, and this is not an infinitely adjustable. This has detents, so you you have it in one of those three positions. So you don't get a lot of variability in the down feed. 
Um, and to really get the optimal dial in on all these things, I should be calculating surface feet per minute. And that, that'll, you know, when you reference your tools and all, they give you that information. But when you're going to manually feed something, you have a difficult time calculating that because you just don't know what your feed rate is, you know, unless, unless your arms and hands can tell your mind what, what feed rate you're pushing at, you know, so, um, but here's the, here's the question. So we're going to manually do this. Now I could, um, I mean, you can see the spindle on this thing is really beefy. You can see, I don't know what the diameter is on that, but it's, it's probably five inches in diameter, uh, the spindle column. So it's really rigid. Um, so the question is, would you feed with this, with the, uh, quill or would you lock the quill and keep it all the way up and feed, uh, feed the table up or the knee up on this thing? The other option, the only downside to that is I'd really like to lock the knee and keep it completely locked in. The other thing I could do to help rigidity on this is to move the whole head back and move the table back and get it really close to the column here. I have it out because I was put, I had something big in there a while back, um, but I may loosen this up and, uh, and slide this back. It's, uh, there's a couple bolts and then this thing right here adjusts it back. So uh, we'll probably go ahead and do that. All right, so we got our starting hole made there. That should have let our regular drill uh, follow that pretty easily. And that looks neat. All right, so far so good on that. So now let's uh, let's swap our drill chuck out and uh, put the end mill in. Okay, so we got our um, drill chuck out and we got our one inch uh, end mill in there. And as you can see, the uh, without the drill chuck and we have the end mill uh, directly in the tool holder, we have a lot more space here. And you know, to eliminate having to extend this down so far, we're gonna just bring the knee up till it's almost touching. That way we don't have to go very far at all and extend this out and, and uh, introduce more uh, rigidity issues into our equation here. So I'm going to loosen the knee. All right, let me get you in closer where you can see what's going on here. We'll zoom you in there. Let me show you this real quick. We got this thing down on about a. We got this thing down on about 80, uh, about 100 RPMs. So there's 85, and there's 115. So we're just a little under 115. Get you a close up of. All right, let's see what happens. We'll know immediately if this thing is gonna chatter or you know, be uh, not very rigid and be moving and shaking the table all the way around. Because we, with stainless, you wanna go slow but have pretty good feed pressure, you know, pretty firm.
Well, I wish I could get you in there close where you can see this, but before we get all the way through, I am going to show you a close up of what it's doing. And uh, so far, it it feels pretty stable. Um, as you can see, it's cut all the way down through the ridge there, and um, I can feel, you know, movement in the quill. You know, like uh, like it, it could help if it was a little bit more rigid, but. But so far, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Maybe we could do a little bit more RPM. I don't know. I'm not going to go any more RPM. That seems to be cutting good. I don't see any signs of, you know, smoke or anything. So we probably could even go a little firmer with it. But we'll just keep going like we're going here. Okay, well that was fairly uneventful, you know. I'm, I'm uh, not at all unhappy with how that worked out. So one thing I didn't uh, talk about is the setup here. And I've got uh, V-blocks in here, you know, holding this on the right 45 degree angle. So let's get it out and take a look at it. All right, there's our whole, um, I went ahead and just uh, cleaned it up and wiped all the oil off of it because this is gonna get welded and I really don't wanna introduce a whole bunch of extra oil onto this part. Now we gotta do a really good job of cleaning that one, but wow, what a fit up, you know? It's a little, it's a tiny bit loose in there, you know, so we can get it fitted and adjusted and all, uh, which is, you know, this was about 20 thousandths smaller than our than our one inch end mill. This was 980 thousandths, but, um, I'm really happy with that and how that looks and, and fits up on there. So um, anyway, guys, uh, I think the keys, you know, you might you might watch this video and say, uh, wow, why did you why did you have to make such a long video and go through all these details and, you know, work on getting all this moved in and rigid. And then then you could say my argument to that would be, what if I didn't do all that? What if I just chucked it up in there and just tried to run a drill bit through it, you know, and uh, twisted a drill bit? half and two uh from the torque that it generated on it so anyway guys hopefully uh you enjoyed this video and uh, i will see you on the next one